In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself into. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls herself the holder of guilt. Before the worker can answer, shut your eyes tightly and clench your jaw. Count to exactly 20 seconds and then open your eyes. You should find yourself on an unassuming dirt footpath in a moderately wooded area. If you're in any other location, then you miscounted the seconds. You have only minutes more to live. If you are on the dirt path, then walk along it. You should feel, at all times, an eddy of the wind playing against your ear. Should you ever stop feeling it, quickly stand still and shout into the foliage, I freely admit it was my fault! If the little eddy of the wind does not return, then I suggest that you make yourself comfortable and arm yourself as these woods are now your home for all eternity and they are filled to bursting with hidden creatures from the lowest pits of damnation, all eager to messily devour you. If the wind does return, then continue along the path as normal. After a long while, you should find a battered little shanty. Knock twice before entering. Failing to knock properly beforehand results in a punishment that cannot be adequately described in any human tongue. Upon entering the shanty, you will find yourself in a clean little kitchen. Quickly shut the door behind you and remain standing, head bowed respectfully where you entered. For Ventilly, working the kitchen will be a woman who never turns to face you as she goes about her endless task of working on a meal that will never be finished. If you pay attention, you will notice that she works to an exact rhythm, but this is not terribly important, just an interesting detail. There is only one question to which this woman will respond. Why is it their fate to be used for wrong? Give her a moment. It will take her a while before she gets around to answering. When she does, she will recount in your mother's voice, even if you have never heard your mother's voice, and in explicit detail, every wrong that you have ever visited upon others, no matter how trivial, no matter if it was intentional or unintentional, no matter how shameless, unrepentant or vile a person you are, or even if your wrongdoings are few or barely extant, you will feel the weight of your wrongdoing pressing down on you. Remain standing in your respectful pose, even as the weight of your wrong increases to unbearable levels. If you ever falter, you will be crushed, doomed to remain a broken heap on the floor of this kitchen, listening to the woman repeat herself forever. Then again, that would mean that you were never worthy of collecting any of the objects in the first place. Once every wrong has been recited in excruciating detail, then, if you are still standing, the woman will ask you to retrieve an ingredient from the top cupboard. Go fetch it. Do not open any cupboard other than the one indicated, and do not turn your head in a way that would allow you to see the woman's face. There are fates worse than what would happen if you do either, but the list is very short. The ingredient she is looking for is the only spice that has no label. Hand it to her in a way that prevents you from looking her in the face, then return to where you were standing earlier. Wait a while and she will eventually offer a small sample of her cooking for you to eat. Walk over to her and accept it, being careful not to put yourself in a position to see her face. It is a sizable chunk of cooked beef. Thank her politely tell her you had a wonderful time visiting and will come back another day, then quietly leave via the door through which you came. You will find you have walked out of a supply closet in the mental institution. The food you acquired from the holder is no ordinary beef. It never rots, no matter how old it gets. And eating even a small bite of it will instantly heal all your wounds, no matter how grave. It does this, however, by transferring said wounds to someone you care deeply about. Survival in the future of this quest will make eating this beef necessary at least a few times. That chunk of cooked beef is object 116 of 538. 
Hopefully, the objects are important enough to sacrifice people you genuinely care about. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself into. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Hoarder of Oblivion. If the attendant stares at you and swallows audibly, follow him to a room deep within the building, far deeper than you thought possible. The attendant will open the door and give you a fearful look. If you are brave, enter the room. If you are craven, flee now. Inside the room, there is only a chair. Sit down in it. If at any time you begin to feel fear, get up and leave. You are still free to escape. If you choose to stay, you must sit and wait until the lights in the room flicker. Do not stand. Do not get up. If you are not sitting down when the lights flicker, then you will plummet into the void between worlds, a meal for its grotesque denizens. When the lights flicker, you must shut your eyes immediately. Gazing upon the void will destroy your mind. Only when you hear a man clear his throat may you open your eyes. You will be in a dark dungeon, bound to the chair by a web of ebony chains. Surrounding you will be heads impaled with blood-soaked spikes, and standing before you will be a man wearing an executioner's uniform. Stare him in the eyes. Do not shift your gaze and do not show even the slightest tinge of fear, for if you do, he will add your head to his collection. The only thing you may say without being beheaded is the question, what will they bring? The executioner will laugh, an inhuman laugh, and then the impaled heads will begin to speak. They will speak of horrors, of executions, of their individual ends, but you must not move your gaze from the executioner or you too will be speaking of your death. Eventually, he will speak of his own end, of what they brought to him. When he finishes, he will remove his cowl, revealing a skeleton's face. With a cackle, he will wave his hands and the world will plunge into darkness. When the light returns, you will be sitting peacefully in the lobby of the institution. In your lap, will be the executioner's cowl. The cowl is object 34 out of 538. You have seen what they bring. Will you stop them? In any city, in any country, go to the city hall or place of local government. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit the one who calls herself the holder of shame. The worker will stiffen and put on an obvious facade of confusion. Quietly apologise for the misunderstanding while discreetly handing the worker a cash bribe. If the bribe is sufficient, you will be directed through a door behind the desk. The door will lead to a hallway that is bright at the entrance, yet grows dimmer further down, such that the very end is completely dark. Walk slowly down the hallway. Should a figure emerge from the darkness, stop immediately. If the figure disappears once you have stopped, then the sleep into which you will fall will be eternal. If the figure remains, however, then wait for it to coalesce into a clear image. It will reveal itself to be a beautiful, youthful girl, perhaps in her early teenage years. The blood spattered across her clothes will make it apparent that she is bullet riddled and tears will flow slowly from her eyes. When she smiles sadly at you, ask, what was their mistake? The girl will cast her eyes to the ground. For the briefest heartbeat of a moment, your vision will be lost. When it returns, the girl will be immediately in front of you, her body trembling as she appears to hold back her tears. Move to embrace her. If she turns away from you, then you deserve no sympathy for the fate you will soon suffer. If the girl preempts you by embracing you first, simply let her. Her blood will smear across your clothes. She will bring her face to yours, such that her tears will soak your own cheek. Hold her close to you and submit to the drowsy feeling that will overcome you. 
You will awaken in the place you call home. There will no longer be any trace of the girl's blood on your clothes, but your cheek will still be damp with her tears. Her tears are object 182 of 538. Turn away from the path you have chosen, lest you repeat their mistake.